today is May 26th, 2021. This is the Kubernetes CSI implementation meeting. Um, we'll go down our usual release status first. Um, starting with 121, I think the main thing we're waiting for here is um, getting our CI updated. Um, do you know if we've made progress on that? Oh, you mean those uh, PRs Patrick have been working on? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, yes, I don't know if he has still have anything else because he has been uh, submitting PRs and then most of them, I think the latest one should also be merged by now. I don't know if there's any, anything pending. Okay. Um, Looks like we still have some jobs that are failing, at least the is, Yeah, so like after, after the last one, I was, uh, he said there's still some flakes. Uh, let's see, this is merged. Yeah, so the last, I think the last PR that he pinned me about, I already merged it. Uh, he said there is one flake. I don't know if he's uh, still working on that or mean that by that but i don't yeah okay. I, I don't know if there looks like there's other. been okay looks like there's at least some improvements um some of the jobs are able to pass now um looks like there's still some more work pending here um that's fine we can follow up with patrick offline um next is 122 um i think we discussed some of this already in the CSI spec meeting right before this. Um, yeah. First is the force detached change that Ben is working on. Looks like uh, you and Ben will be working together to, to figure out how to get this tested in a POC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's good. Next is uh, marking volume uncertain states. Um, I think, is this waiting on Hamant to review? Yes, sir. So I I will try to rebase it today, yeah. And the ping okay. Hamant to review. Cool. Thank you. Um, next up is the non-graceful node shutdown cap. Um, yeah, I so still actually, haven't had a chance to oh. look at this, but okay. go ahead. Uh, so uh, yeah, I asked us, uh, the release team, yeah, they're saying actually we can still merge things as provisional. So I think I need to change the, I, right now it still says implementable. So I need to change that to provisional. Then that should mm -hmm. be fine. So the stage is uh, R5 okay. is fine. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try to look at this. Um, I think also this, some of this is going to depend on the um, the testing you're going to do with the CSI spec changes. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. But I'm saying I'm I'm thinking we don't have to wait for. Do we need to wait for test results? No. Uh, but it, uh, it's fine. We can wait a little bit. I mean, it's not. I think it's like uh, what's the date that uh, Sat said is the sixth. So yeah. Mm -hmm. it's fine. Okay. We'll wait until then. Yeah. And see, you know, how, if, how far we can go. Sounds good. Um, and if anyone else also wants to take a look at this, um, please feel free. All right. Um, next up is the uh, volume data JSON file being deleted. Um, I believe Jonathan is working on a fix for this. Is that right? Yeah, I'm still working on debugging and I'm trying to get to a point where I can con um, consistently reproduce this on my local machine. So I know Hamant sent me some instructions that you shared in the last meeting that show how to run the end to end tests against a locally installed driver. So I'm planning to work on that today. And yesterday I was working, um, trying to dig through how it works in the Delve debugger. So I, I would say I'm not to the point where I can consistently reproduce it yet. Um, I did have 
an idea just reading through the code and I, I wanted to run it by you. I can do that now or I can discuss it after the meeting. Um, we can discuss it here. That's fine. Okay. So I know in, in, in reading through the discussion about the race condition for the DSW, I mean, I guess like I, I think the only way to really fix this, at least from my understanding, is if we fix that race condition in the DSW, which from that, that discussion that that you had, it's not straightforward at all. Um, it's basically a question if, if we use the pod status manager or, um, or the pod manager. And the concern that you mentioned, um, if I, so if, if we rely on, if we rely on the pod status manager. I'm sorry, now I'm getting the two of them confused. So we, um, basically the, the, the pod gets removed based on the pod status manager, but then it gets added back based on the pod manager. Did I get that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we rely just on the status manager. I think the issue that you you mentioned with that is that when the cubelet restarts, that's not necessarily going to be up to date. So we could end up unmounting a volume for a pod that's temporarily missing on cubelet restart. And I guess my question is, could we set basically um, stop the reconciler from um, unmounting any volumes until after that first sync has been done and then rely on the pod status manager? I think, um, I think that's what we do for reconstruction. Um, is that right, Jing? I think the, but I think one of the, I think maybe problem is that the cubelet itself <clears throat> or like in reconstruction you know we always run we always reconstruct first before running the reconciler but i think the problem is is that once the reconciler runs it's still possible for the pod to not be in the pod status manager um i think based on the flow of that so I think it's it's an issue of coordinating with the pod status manager or the pod manager, not necessarily coordinating within the volume reconciler itself. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I'll look, to I'll look into that a little bit more. Like I said, I, I still need to reach the point where I can reproduce this condition consistently. And then I, yeah, I guess I, there's still an open question in my mind about how we actually fix that condition. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I think, you know, fixing the actual race condition that the cause of this whole thing, I think that's going to be pretty tough. Um, yeah. I think the best, the, the simplest thing we can do for now is at least stop this particular issue from happening. It's not going to fix, you know, all it's not going to fix the root cause and it's not going to fix all possible classes of failures of this type. But I, I think at least fixing this particular side effect is, I think, serious enough that we should do a targeted patch for this. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. At least to resolve the, the data loss issue. Um, so in, in, in your comments there on the screen, you mentioned that one option is to get re get rid of that remove all call, um, and if we remove it from orphan volume cleanup, where would we do it then? Because that seems to be getting called consistently for pod cleanup. I think the uh, my main idea was instead of remove all, just do a remove. So it only removes the directory if it's empty. We don't try to. Uh, traverse down and delete content if there's still content inside. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would certainly be, be much simpler. So I guess we could, we could do a fix like that for now. I, I, I still kind of want to keep digging on, on the DSW issue, but I don't want that to hold up this fix. Yeah, I think uh, definitely we want to see long term if we can just resolve this fix in general. But um, I do think it will it will be quite involved. Um, so yeah, I think prioritizing fixing this particular issue I think is is a good short term answer. Okay, that makes sense. All right. Well, I'll work on reproducing it, and then I'll focus on that the simpler immediate fix. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, next up is Windows. Uh, yes, the pro um, progress is uh, still um, Mauricio, like have uh, like volume disk API uh, changes and I think volume API. I basically finished done reviewing it. It uh, could merge today, and uh, this API also like uh, I reviewed most of the part. I think is uh, should be ready. Yeah. Cool. And uh, the file, you. yeah, the file system SMB. Uh, should be like uh, ready soon because those are smaller changes. And uh, the community uh, binary, I was uh, trying to make a PR uh, like in the process of doing that. All right, sounds good. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, we have the read write once pod access mode. Uh, yeah, updates on this side. I received a small piece of feedback on the CSI spec. Uh, addressed that this morning. Uh, it sounds like from the previous meeting, the CSI spec will hopefully be released. Yeah, with enough, with ample time to uh, integrate this in the sidecars and Kubernetes. Um, and I still have some uh, work to do to uh, create a shared library for mapping. Uh, these uh, access modes and then using that in each of the sidecars. Um, so yeah, still in progress for now. All right, that sounds good. Thank you very much. Um, all right, next we have volume populators. Okay. Is can, 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 can you all hear oh. me now? Yep. All right, stupid double mute. Um, so I uh, I got help from Tim on an example for how to implement this in the API server, and I have a patch that actually works already. And so I'm at the point of adding test cases to make sure you know to cover all the different corner case possibilities. But um, the the API server work is coming along, and I should have a PR ready soon. Awesome. Thank you very much. And it would have been hopeless without Tim's help. I'll mention that. So thank you, thank you to Tim, if you're listening. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, a really tricky API work that you're doing here. So all right. Um, so I think that's it that we're tracking for 122. Uh, was there anything else that is missing here. Okay, let's move on to miscellaneous topics. Um, first item is removing the V1 beta one snapshot API. So I was discussing this with some API machinery folks and actually it's not that easy as uh, I originally thought it would be. Um, the main challenge is that actually switching the storage version, switching the storage version of the API does not 
actually migrate existing objects that are stored in etcd to that version so what you need to do is you actually need to read the object out of the api server and then do an update on it to uh, update or a patch um, and then when it gets written back it will get written back to the storage version so, so have to do this in on your system this is not like our controller can do that right? this is like whoever uh, so using, a user has to do this there's two there's two ways to do this um one is if you have a controller that is just periodically updating status on all the objects in the system um, if you have a controller that already does that, then that's already handled. Otherwise, there is this tool called the storage version migrator mm. that you can run, which will do it. Um, this is before, uh, let's say, you upgrade uh, to our... Yeah. We're talking about we are moving you our have... car to uh, only use V1. Uh, so before that user has to kind of uh, use this tool right so you you have to do this before you remove the v1 beta schema from the crd definition so you can switch callers you can install the v1 api you can switch the callers to use the v1 api but you can't actually remove the schema from the definition until you have somehow confirmed every single stored object has been updated to the new version. But, but you can also change the stored version to V1. Nothing stops you from changing that, right? It's just... Yes, yes. Um, you, so, you can't drop the old yeah. one. Yeah, so let me pull up our CRD definitions just to sort of demonstrate. Um, where's our... A client. Pack? Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. I'm looking at the, the CRD. Right. I'm looking at the wrong repo. Um, client CRD. Okay. So, oops. Um, yes, yeah, so the okay, stored version, we already changed that, right? We already changed that to. Yeah. Plan. That is fine. Mm -hmm. So you can change storage to true for V1. That's already there. Um, yeah. You can also, yeah. And then um, for V1 beta, after some time, what you can do is... Um, when beta is uh, the, the server is true, storage is false. Yeah. This yeah. Is when beta. Yeah. And... So after some time, you can then switch served for V1 beta to false, okay. which means that um, it means that you know people can't make API calls using the V1 beta type anymore. It has to all be V1 uh, V1. Mm -hmm. um, but then, but you still have so served can be false, storage can be false. But you still have to keep this definition here. Mm -hmm. um, like you still have to have this V1 beta definition inside um, the CRD object. Um, okay. The only you can we can only remove this when we confirm and we know for sure that every single persistent persisted object in at CD has been read out and rewritten back on the newer uh, V1 object type. So, so, so wait a minute, why, why do we care about that? Like the moment we stop serving it, can we just declare victory and say the beta is gone and but, but leave it there in the CRD for back, you know, so the people who have stale objects in their CDs can read them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. I think that's I, that's I, fine. I don't see what the what the point of removing the the beta definition is. As long as we stop serving it and stop storing it, 
that seems that feels like the end point because yeah trying, i so think trying that's... to do what you're saying and know when it's safe to remove it like how would you possibly know that at the moment you're trying to install the crd you yeah. just like whoever is doing the upload have to make sure and then yeah like whoever is managing the cluster would have to like know that before yeah. uh doing it i i think the main thing like the main reason for wanting to remove the whole schema is just to prevent someone from actually going in and like changing this back to like true and like mucking around with it and getting into some weird state i don't know that seems like that user has screwed himself so <laughs> maybe <clears throat> I mean, so, so seriously, like, like you can change any CRD definition to add more versions and do evil things if, if you want to do evil things. Like anyone who has that's the power very to true. modify CRDs has a lot of power to, to cause that's, problems. That's, <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. I think the other thing, the other maybe thought is, you know, in the future, if we end up having like, you know, 10 different versions, then just this file is going to be ridiculously huge and tough to maintain. And if we want to add a new field, do we need to add it to v1 beta1 too, <clears throat> even though it's not served? That's strange. Uh, no, you, you, you can't ever change v1 beta1. So if we added a new field, it would be added to v1, and it would be marked optional, and there would be no analog in v1 beta1. So if anyone did somehow enable the beta API, that field would just be missing when they access it through the beta API. Mm. But, but that's, that's yeah. how backwards compatibility works, is, is that yeah, anything okay. new you add has to be optional. OK, it could work. It could work. But, but no, no one should care about beta at this point, right, except for the backwards compatibility stuff. Mm. Yes. So, the, so the, the important question from, from my perspective is, when do we flip that served flag to false? Because that's when, mm -hmm. that's when CSI plugins must be running a, four, a V4 or later sidecar, right? If you're running yes. a V3 sidecar and the cluster you're on switches served to false, you're screwed. <clears throat> yes. The, um, the, what we've done in Kubernetes core APIs is, is typically there. We'll turn it off after a year. Sounds good. So basically in 1.22, uh, uh, I think we said that we are going to update the uh, external provisioner sidecar to mm -hmm. use V1. And mm -hmm. then- That's fine. Then and we can say like a year after that, then we okay. can stop serving So V1. like the 1.25. So that gives, 1.25 yeah. will change this. That, uh huh. Yeah. That gives people a year to upgrade to the new provisioner version. Yeah, let's write that in here. Let's keep. Uh, let's so, go. right now we have both V1 and V1 beta and uh, served to set to true for both. Mm -hmm. okay, so, I will let and, you write, uh, <laughs> Michelle. And okay. the storage, storage is uh, V1 is true and the uh, V1 beta is false. Is the no. current? Only one storage can be set to true. Yeah. Correct. Uh, uh, sorry, I missed that. Uh, what, what's that? You can serve, the, we serve both, but we can only store once, one. So storage version mm -hmm. right now, uh, Right now it's, it's V1. Yeah. We changed that to V1, yeah. And we uh, so both. Have, mm -hmm. Okay, so for now customer can use both V1 um, beta or V1 uh, snapshot yeah, API. Yeah. And, and I just I just wanted to point out a, a practical concern for plugin authors, which is that while the 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 GA version of the CRDs and the, GR, the GA version of the snapshot controller uh, coincided with the 1.21 release. I'm sorry, the 1.20 release, right? It was 1.20. 
um, there's no guarantee that it's actually that the right version is actually installed. You could have Kubernetes 1.21 with the beta CRD and the, the old beta snapshot controller because the admin didn't know what he was doing. Um, and CSI plugins have to deal with that. Yes, that <laughs> the versioning issue for out of tree components still remains a, a problem. I think the, the best thing we can do given that issue is we as a project can set guidelines and recommendations and what the project will actually support. But like what, what, what a, a CSI plugin like Trident actually does in practice is it has to go look at the CRD and see what version of the CRD is installed. And then based on that, decide what version of the sidecar to give you um, because there's always going to be a situation where you have a very new Kubernetes release and a very old snapshot or release. And, and we just have to try to find the sidecar that won't blow up when you have that combination. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, the sidecar that uses V1 beta is, you know, still going to be working, right? Up until this 1.25 deadline that we're saying Right, but, but um, we're not, as a community, we're not going to backport all the bug fixes from v4 to v3. So over I time, mean, v3 will get more and more out of date. Because I we, mean, we, we will we will backport for up to a year. Right, but like probably the critical bug fixes and not every little thing. So like as a practical yeah. matter, we're, you know, we want to get people on v4 the sooner the better, but we can't do that unless we're confident that the cluster they're on has has the GA CRD. So there's nothing to do other than to just check at install time what's there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also want to ask like what customer need to do uh, like before 1.25 when we stop serving? Uh, like if, a, they if they have if they have automation that uses these objects, then they need to change their objects to use the V1 version. Uh, so they they can run some tool to convert from V1 beta to V1 or? I mean, since, since the schema didn't change between V1 beta and V1, all you have to do is just change the version field in the manifest. It could involve recompiling binaries or editing scripts, changing YAML. So this migrator thing, does this, can they run this? So, so this migrator is only about migrating the, reading the data out of at CD and writing it back in order to update the stored version. Th mm -hmm. This doesn't help with if the customer has, you know, their YAMLs and manifests or their controllers that are still using the, the, the V1 beta mm -hmm. clients. They, yeah, they that, still need to change those. Okay. Yeah. So for the existing um, snapshot object, they can run this uh, version mag migrator too to convert to V1 yes. object? They could, but they don't need to. Uh, because they don't need to, because when you, if you read like the, there's a conversion that happens between API objects, right? So your, so your object could be stored as V1 beta one, but if you're using a V1 client to read and write to it, it does the conversion. So you don't need to do anything for your existing object, like still well, uh, running. Uh, until we drop support for beta, then anyone still using beta will s see failures, right? So that's the, if someone well, has scripts. I think, I, I think Jing is asking, do we need, does a customer need to actually run this version migrator um, on their existing objects? And I think the, the, Answer is no, because we've concluded that we will never remove the V1 beta one schema. So there's no need to run this 
storage version migrator tool. Oh, so uh, it's based on like, we never remove this schema. Yeah, if it's we promise never to remove this v1 beta 1 schema, then you don't have to update the uh, you don't have to update the etcd version. We could do something like for for brand new clusters, you know, if you're installing this on a cluster that's never been used before, you, you could install a version of the CRD that didn't have the beta thing. But for any cluster that had the the old CRD and you're just upgrading, you just always leave the beta schema there. We don't, but we don't want to maintain that many versions. You know, it, you know that the schema, we don't want to maintain two versions of that. We only want oh, to I, I agree, version. I agree. I'm just, I'm just yeah. like- But I'm you can do that, it, yeah. It, it like, would be uh, safe Trident because can do if, that it's, if, if it's to. not served and it's not uh -huh. stored, then, then you don't actually need it on a brand new cluster. But yeah, if I'm it's already like, there, uh -huh. removing it doesn't achieve anything, so. <laughs> No, Trident's not going to mess with your CRDs. We've we've put that stick mm -hmm. in the ground. We we will check your CRDs, but we're not going to alter them. <laughs> well, because if it's brand new, then even if you just use the CRD that still has that, but it, it says not doesn't serve V1 beta one any, anymore, so it's not going to create but, but, any V1 beta one objects, right? But Trident Trident will not install the CRD in the controller. Like that's that's your problem as an admin to get oh, the okay. CRD and controller onto the cluster. Yeah. By the way, I have a clarifying question. Um, if we keep a V1 beta 1 schema and then we set serving to, to false, if a user tries to create a V1, C, uh, V1 beta 1 object, what happens? So that, that fails. That... Okay, cool. You can't read or write. Sounds good. All right. Um, next topic, uh, I think Christian, you had a, a question. Yes, so there's an open PR and Grant Cheng and I have had some conversation there and it was discussed, or it was mentioned that we would discuss this in the CSI call today. So I just wanted to have a reminder here. Essentially, we fixed a bug recently where the error could become nil whenever we were trying to remove annotations from the volume snapshot content. That has been fixed. However, we're still not seeing the error actually propagate to the volume snapshot content because we repeatedly get this object has been modified error. I know it's something that Grant was working on earlier to try and change to patch instead of update. And then that PR was closed. So I submitted this, it is fairly small, it basically forces us to get a copy of the volume snapshot content whenever we're attempting to um, update the error status. So is one more API call here acceptable or is it something that we should avoid and just live with until we have a long-term fix is essentially the question. We are, we're not using patch? So yeah, we can't use patch actually. So Grant actually uh, uh, made the fix and uh, that actually does not uh, solve the problem. So right now we're actually trying to, uh, trying to look at what is causing so many conflicts. So uh, uh, is, Grant, mm -hmm. is, is, do we have like two updates that are updating the same field? Then that's like the main reason why a patch switching to a patch wouldn't work. Uh, so we do, uh, so uh, Grant actually, is Grant here? Yeah, he actually look at this one. Uh, so he has some proposals. I think he's going to look yeah. at it. Yeah, so I tried, I tried the strategic merge patch at first, but then realized that that's, you can only use strategic merge patch for uh, non-CR objects. Um, so I did try with JSON patch and that didn't really seem to lower the number of these errors that we were seeing. Um, but then I had a proposal on the issue basically where we only update the volume snapshot object in the snapshot controller and we only update the snapshot content in the sidecar, the snapshot or sidecar. So we separate the responsibility of write access. So that might solve it in the long term. I'm I'm confused about how the patch was having problems. Like I think it's you, so if if you still have like two patches that are patching the same field and you're not like coordinating those two patches, then you'll still get a conflict. But how? Like how would the API server know what what the that there was a conflict. I understand that like, if you have two patches racing with each other, one will win and one will lose. But like, 
there's there's no safety belt there. It should just be that the, the API server processes the patches in the order they turn up and they both get applied. I don't see on what basis it could reject a patch unless the but patch- then Maybe was... you can actually take a look of uh, a grant's uh, PR and then if you- Yeah, I, I would like to do that. Okay, so, let, so yeah, uh, yeah, I can- uh, uh, Show you yeah, the, so if you can take a look. The the other, I think, general pattern or issue that we've seen in the past is like, well, if if say we have to do multiple updates to the same object and we'll, you know, make an update to the object, but then right afterwards make a second update and the um, the second update did not see the first update yet because we're only getting it from the informer and the informer has not been updated with the, um, the new change. So I think things that we have done in the past to deal with that is we also update the cache before we update, actually make the API call. So we, like that's something we do in the PB controller. Like this change right here, do you get and then do update? Uh, so, so instead of like making an API call to actually do a get, what we do in like the PB controller is we update our cache first before making the update API call. That way, if we have a subsequent update, our cache is already using the ref the newest um, object, and but that, that sounds we won't have this out of date issue. Because if if there was another update that happened from another place and you just overwrote your cache, like you could have overwritten valid data from from the actual system. Yeah, or, I or think if your well, update fails after you've updated the cache. Now the cache contains bad data. Yes, like, but I think <laughs> the assumption is that there's only there's only supposed to be like a single writer. It, like if you have multiple writers to the same field. Uh, then that's still, I think, a pattern we should try to yeah. move no, away I, from. I, I agree, um, but like just from a correctness perspective, overwriting your own cache feels super bad um, just because it doesn't act, it, it only works in the situation where you didn't have a problem anyways because you were, you didn't have any other writers, right? It, it, if if what you want is a write that always succeeds, like a JSON patch, I think is the answer. And and I'm I'm very curious to see this this uh, this PR that that doesn't work because yeah yeah if um, yeah if you can take a look at the grid. So so Michelle, so you're saying this like this gap, and then you update. This is not normally not recommended because we are making too many API calls. I mean, uh, sorry, did Jan have something to say? Uh, yeah, there is already a function in client go to retry on conflict uh, that calls something. But the uh, retry on conflict, that's still, you have to go retry, right? I mean, how yeah, 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 yeah. But it, like, it's how, how can we avoid quite... conflict? Because we're getting no, lots no, no, of these errors. It, huh? you, you can't avoid the conflict. Uh, but we are getting but... a lot of these errors. They're just trying to reduce. I'm not saying completely, but reduce because we, we are seeing a lot of this in the log. So we're trying to reduce, right? In in this specific case, we were reproducing these errors for about two hours and the volume snapshot content never got the update. And we kept retrying. Well, then, then there is something very wrong in our design. So what this is wrong. This uh, happened a lot of times, or it's like no, notice one in one of the tests? No, we are seeing a lot of uh, update uh, conflicts. So that's why we are trying to address it, right? Using the patch, but then it does not look like uh, that actually help. So that's why well, we are right now looking at a different, uh, different ways. So uh, Grant has, uh, has some suggestions and he is going to work on that. Uh, but I think, uh, Christian is trying to see if he can just address this, this small problem here by doing this, but I don't know if this is recommended. I thought we don't want to make extra API costs by doing this get. That's why we are discussing here. Uh, this is about error handling, and we should, I think we should propagate the error handling to the user. Uh, I'm we sorry? should not like lose it. Oh, so you're saying that you're suggesting that we should do this? 
Yes, we should retry. Okay. On a conflict. No, this is not. No, this is not retry. We, we do retry, but I think he was saying like after retry, he's still running into the problem. So right. he, the the fix he's doing is just to get retrieve a a fresh API object. Right. Then you update. We that are successful. We I'm are just wondering retry. if this is a recommended because we're making an, another API call to get before in doing update. Yeah, so I think the, the, the question here is like, like we have to do a get because it seems like the object we're storing in the cache is stale. Yeah. And why is that? Why is the object stale in the cache? And why is it stale so often? So I think the app, well, so we do have a, a conflict, but the other retries did get successful. So this particular one, I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Is there any locking going on where like somehow something is deadlocked and, and this is just retrying and something else can't make progress that would be updating the cache? Or do we not have locks in this code? No, we don't have, we don't really have uh, locks. I don't know why this particular one is not getting, but we do, uh, we do see, like in other retries, uh, like update the status, it it get successful after retry because otherwise we couldn't, you know, we couldn't even create snapshots. In ter terms of uh, debugging, can we just like print out the objects like every time before we try to make the call and also after we make the call? What is the state of the objects that we see? And it might be helpful to, to figure out why after we update the object, when we try to do an update again, it's not using the latest version. Yeah, we could add more debugging and more. Uh, I can look into more like the root cause of this uh, this week and next week. Um, it's actually very reproducible. It like happens, you can check like 56 times every job. So. It's mm -hmm. uh, pretty consistent, so I can look into it. Okay, that. and uh, in terms of load, like, is this just like a single test, like the single E2E test that triggers this every time, or do you have to like stress the system under load? It's not under stress. It's just the normal PR job. Okay. The scenario where it was noticed is, at least for the specific PR, is creating a volume snapshot with an improper parameter in the volume snapshot class. And it, if you do that, it's reproducible every time, even if it's just a single snapshot. Okay, yeah, it might just be a bug in how we're handling that. So I'll, I'll debug it more and open an issue to track that. Cool, sounds good. All right, um, let's see. Anything else that anyone wants to discuss today? I just wanted to ask if someone sends me that a link to that PR. Uh, yeah, I'll send it over. Uh, okay. You could send it okay, on Grand Slack. Was send, okay, yeah, thank you. Grand was send, send it you. Yeah, yeah okay. I have it here. I'll send it over. All right, sounds good. Um, if no other topics, then we'll end for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.